Welcome to Read Out Loud. I'm Rocco Stano. And today, my book is Balloons Over Broadway, the true story of the puppeteer of the Macy's Parade. So let's learn about those balloons and the man that made them. So here's a picture of Anthony Tony Frederick Sog. Sog rhymes with Og. He lived from 1880 to 1942. Every little moment has a meaning of its own. That's a quote from Tony Sog. From the time he was a little boy, Tony Sog loved to figure out how to make things move. He once said he became a marionette man when he was only six years old. So you could see little Tony there, and a marionette is a type of puppet. His father had asked him to feed their chickens at 6.30 in the morning every day. Tony had an idea. What if he could feed the chickens without leaving his bed? He rigged up some pulleys and ran a rope from the chicken coop door to his bedroom window. That night, he spread chicken feed outside the chicken coop door. The next morning, he pulled one of the ropes and the door to the chicken coop opened. The chickens ate their breakfast. Tony stayed snug in his bed and his dad, so impressed, never made Tony do another chore. When Tony grew up, he moved to London where he discovered that no one was making marionettes for kids anymore. So out of wood, cloth, and string, Tony began to make puppets. He figured out a way to make his marionettes movements so lifelike that they performed as if they were real actors. Word soon spread about Tony's amazing marionettes. When Tony moved to New York City, the Tony Sog marionettes began performing on Broadway. You know, Broadway is where they have many theaters, and if you ever get to New York City, maybe your moms and dads will take you to a show on Broadway. In the heart of New York City, in Herald Square, was the biggest store on earth, R.H. Macy's department store. Macy's had heard about Tony's puppets and asked him to design a puppet parade for the store's holiday windows. So Tony made new puppets based on storybook characters, then attached them to the gears and pulleys to move them up and down. And we could tell what storybook character that is. That's Humpty Dumpty. And there are all the gears right there. And here's the materials he used to make those puppets. And here is what the window look like. In Macy's Wonder Town windows, Tony's mechanical marionettes danced across the stage as if by magic. All day long, they performed to shoppers, jostling for a better look. And here the people wanted to get up front so they could see it. But Macy's had even a bigger job in store for Tony. Many of the people working at Macy's were immigrants. An immigrant is a person who moved from one country to another. So these people moved from many different countries to the United States. And as the holidays approached, they missed their own holiday traditions of music and dancing in the streets. Macy's agreed to put on a parade for their employees, and they hired Tony to help. Tony, too, was an immigrant, so he loved the idea of creating a parade based on street carnivals from all over the world. He made costumes and built horse-drawn floats, and Macy's even arranged to bring in bears and elephants and camels from the Central Park Zoo. The animals joined hundreds of Macy's employees on Thanksgiving Day, 1924, winding their way from Harlem to Herald Square. It was a dazzling parade. In fact, Macy's first parade was such a success that they decided to have one every year on Thanksgiving Day to celebrate America's own holiday. Every year, the parade grew. But when Macy's brought in lions and tigers, in addition to the bears and elephants and camels, 
the animals roared and growled and frightened the children. Tony, can you do something spectacular? And Tony says, okay. Macy's asked Tony to replace the animals. Tony hoped to replace the animals with some kind of puppets, but his marionettes were less than three feet tall. He would have to make much larger puppets in order for them to be seen in a parade. But how could he make them strong enough to hold up in bad weather and yet light enough to move up and down the streets? Tony knew of a company in Ohio that made blimps out of rubber. A blimp was an airship that was filled with helium. You may see them at uh, football games, but they're not very common these days. They were made out of rubber, the perfect material for any weather. When he called the company and showed them his sketches, they agreed to make what Tony wanted. Still, how would Tony make his big puppets move? Tony had an idea from an Indonesian rod puppet in his toy collection. On Thanksgiving Day, Tony's creatures, some as high as 16 feet, spilled into the streets and the crowds cheered wildly. Part puppet, part balloon. The air-filled rubber bags wobbled down the avenues, propped up by wooden sticks. So we have a caterpillar, we have a cat, we have an elephant, and then you see people holding the sticks. Because if they weren't holding the sticks, what do you think would happen? The balloons would fly away off into space. But now the sidewalks were so packed with people that only those in the first few rows could really see the parade. Tony realized his puppets would have to be even bigger and higher off the ground. And though the sticks helped to steer the puppets, they were stiff and heavy. Tony wanted his balloons to articulate, to move and gesture, more like puppets, but how? With marionettes, the controls are above and the puppets hang down. But what if the controls were below and the puppets could rise up? There's a lot happening on this page. During the next year, Tony set his new idea into motion. This time, he asked the company in Ohio to make the balloons out of rubberized silk, as strong as rubber, but lighter than rubber alone. The most important, Tony ordered the balloons to be filled not just with air, but with helium too. Since helium is lighter than air, it would make the balloons rise. Once the puppets were completed, they were deflated and shipped back to Tony in New York. They were all packed in these boxes and they went to New York. Tony did not know if everything would go as planned. What if the balloons are filled with too much helium? What if it hit a sharp object. Will they fit under the L, the elevator train track? In New York City at that time, there were many trains that ran above the streets and they were called the L or elevated train. It was still dark on Thanksgiving morning when Tony filled the balloons with helium, tethered them down with sandbags, by 1 p.m., the sidewalks were packed with people ready for the parade. Then, one by one, Tony cut the lines to the sandbags. Let's have a parade. And the magnificent upside-down marionettes rose up to the skies.
Oh my, they certainly look big. Nodding and waving the crowds below, they sail past Central Park, they sail down Broadway, they shimmied and swayed through the canyons of New York City. And we see people looking out their windows. They could look right into the eyes of the balloon. We have more balloons here. High above the crowds, they flounced in the afternoon wind, pulling the rope handlers this way and that. Yet, with every heave-ho, the balloon gestured and articulated like wild puppets, and the crowds screamed for more. After the balloons eased under the L, they ended up in front of Macy's at Tony's Wondertown windows. Here we have them coming under the L, and it says, it was a parade New Yorkers would never forget. And from that day on, every Thanksgiving morning, crowds have lined the sidewalks of New York City to see what new balloons would rise to the sky for the Macy's famous parade. Tony Sarg, the puppeteer who loved to figure out how to make things move, had set the stage with a little rigging for a puppet to be anything anyone could imagine it to be. 